By now, you've probably heard about the new point color tool in Lightroom Classic, but a lot of the tutorials so far have been very academic and they're not practical to professional photography. So in this episode, I'm gonna show how to use that new point color tool in real estate photography. I'm gonna show a couple different methods using that tool, but then I'm gonna show you a third option, and that's gonna be an alternative to using the point color tool that in many cases can get you faster results more accurate results, and they're also gonna be better controlled results, giving you then a variety of options that you can use. To show a real world example in professional real estate photography, we're gonna be dealing with color casts with this challenging image because the color casts that we're dealing with, there's a lot of orange that's across these countertops, but that also matches the same color that we see on these bar stools that are here, the floor, and also the backsplash here that's made out of brick and the cabinets. So we don't wanna affect all of it. We wanna select certain sections of that, but there are a couple different ways to do this. So first, let's just take a look at the point color tool really quick, and then let's take a look how to control it, and then get into that third option, which is the alternative. So first, the point color tool will be under the color mixer panel. And under there, that's typically where you would have the HSL sliders if you were to select mixer. But what we wanna do, and instead of using these HSL sliders, we're gonna use the new point color tool. So we want to make sure we click that. Now it brings up this tool here. Also in the point color tool, you want to make sure that you have this selected. This is going to be important as we step through. It's for your ranges to be able to see your ranges. And we'll get to that in just a second. And what it allows us to do, similar to other tools in Lightroom Classic, is to sample a color using an eyedropper. Now with this, one of the frustrating things that you will find is that if a color is too neutral, you can't use it. So for instance, I know there's color cast on the wall, but I can't click over here on this. You'll notice over here on the right hand side, it says this color is too neutral. So I can't use that. Another reason why the third alternative I'll show gives you a lot more control. Anyways, let's say that we want to control this color cast. And so you can see as I'm hovering over this, it shows me a nice swatch of the color that I'm dealing with. At the same time, on the right hand side, it shows me how that color appears in the HSB model. And we can see that over here, the last color that I was working around, it's falling somewhere in here, kind of in these orangish areas here between red and yellow before we get into green. Now remember this, because as we get into the third option, this will become very crucial. So anyways, what you would do is when you find the color that you want to work with, you can then click on that color. And now what's happened is we have a swatch and we can make multiple swatches for multiple color corrections here. And what you can first do is to see how much is being affected is click visual range. And when you click this checkbox, it turns into a monochromatic image, a black and white image, except for the areas that are being affected. And you can see that's why we have some of these oranges. Now you can see by selecting that color that I still have a lot of other things selected that I don't want to desaturate. So if I were, which by the way, there's three different sliders here, middle one is saturation, and typical for color casts, we would take that particular color and then we would reduce its saturation. But now I'm desaturating a lot. So what I can do is I can play around with some of the ranges here. So there's a hue range, a saturation range, and a luminance range. And this basically is your HSB or HSL. So now I can say, well, let me move the slider a little bit. And you can see that there's things that are changing in the image and also up in this panel up here. If you watch as I'm moving that, then you can see it's changing those ranges of colors where they would fall in. So I can say I want more into the reds, less into the greens, and I can see how that's moving. I'll just undo that though real quick. And I can do the same thing with the range of saturation by moving this slider here, or I can also decide at what extent by moving this one or feathering it, which then is this one. So I can say don't feather nearly as much into it. Another quick way also to adjust your ranges, instead of using all these sliders or a combination of both, 
you can just unclick this visualize range. When you have that unclicked, you can also just change your range here and you could leave that checked. But what's nice here with this range slider is that if you hold down your Alt key on Windows or Option key on a Mac and then move the slider, now you see that visualize range. So we can see just how much is being affected either way. So you can do both. You can see here all the way over, still a lot of oranges that were showing up over here. And if I then move it all the way to the left, you can see it's hardly hitting any range at all. Well, I can play around with this all that I want and then eventually say, well, I'd like to desaturate that. Then I can turn off visual range and that's what we have. Now, let's take a quick look at just this particular exercise by turning on and off the color mixer. I'm going to do it by just uh, clicking and holding down on the eye icon. So we have then before and then we have after. Let's zoom in a little bit over here to where that color cast was. This is after, this is before. So we can see there's a lot of color cast and then when I release it, we can see that it's gone. But watch the cabinets over here. This is with it this is without it. I don't want that much of the correction to be applied to those areas. So what we're going to do is the second option, the second of the third options here, to have more control. What I'm going to first do is back out of all those edits, and instead of using the color mixer here, I'm going to use it in a mask. So I'm going to use the masking tool. Here I can select the countertop, or nearly all the countertop, by doing a rectangle object. So if I select object and I don't use the brush, but I use this tool up here, the rectangle tool, then what I can do is I can draw a rectangle around this area and it should then detect mostly that island. And it did. It did though overlap on other areas. But here then what I can do is with the mask selected, besides all the other sliders that I have, I can then get very close to just the color that I want to desaturate that's casting by selecting, once again, the point color tool. And this is something new in masking because the HSL sliders weren't there, where now the point color tool is part of the masking. So I can select that and go down here to where we were getting those casts, and there's my color, and then I can say, yes, let's drop that saturation. So I can drop that saturation down. Now what's happening though, is if I take a look at where that mask is by clicking this little icon to say show overlay, and if now I also then zoom in, I can see that it's coming over top of the cutting board. So if I take off the overlay, then I can see that here on this cutting board, I have a lot of desaturation going on, which shouldn't be happening right in this area. If I take a closer look at this by turning this mask off, you can see that's what it should have been, and with it on, it's this way. Now, there are a variety of things you can do with the mask. I can select the mask again, I can say show overlay, and I could then subtract from the mask by using, for instance, a brush, and then using a small brush and erasing some of this off of there so it's not being affected. The same way I could do some adding with another brush and then I could add in the other areas that I feel need to be also included. And I'm just doing that real rough. But you can see that this is already very time consuming to get the result that I want. So this isn't my preferred option for doing this. Yes, it, it is an option and in some cases it can work. But in practical situations like this, it just doesn't. So that's where my third option comes in. And what it is, it's using then Photoshop. So whether we're doing HDR or whether we're doing Flambient, at some point you're probably going to be in Photoshop and you can easily just take care of it there. So what I've done is I've opened this image after all the editing, I've opened it in Photoshop so that we can deal with this and correct it with the techniques that I want to show you. But first, let's take a look at what this was up against and why it has so much color cast to begin with. So this was at the original shot here. You can see this was a very large Photoshop file and this was for some amenity shots for a condo complex 
and those don't allow much time to shoot. You only have a couple minutes, didn't have time to carry out all the lights, do flambient like I would inside of a house or inside of a larger commercial shoot. So in cases like this, I'm using the high-end HDR technique that I show in my course on expert editing. And if you're not familiar with that course, it's part of my pro courses. I have a course on professional interior real estate photography showing how you could use flash in cases like what we're up against here and not have to worry about color casts really at all. I also then have that course on expert editing. And then I also have another course on pro exterior. Also, if you're looking at these courses, take a look at the bundles, which can save you some money by buying more than one course at a time. So going back here though, to our problem at hand, you can see that there's by nature a lot of different color casts that were going on. This was one exposure that was shot. And then this was another exposure that was shot and a lot of different blending and color corrections and things had to go on until I finally got something that was workable and I could start applying then some of the other standard editing to it. So that's where we ended up then with this image. So we're up against now apples to apples from where we were trying to use the point color tool in Lightroom Classic. Here what we can do though in Photoshop is very simple. First, we can get control of the color range that we're going to use by simply going to select and then down to color range. That will bring up this dialog box. And with this dialog box, we can get a lot of control over the colors that we want to select. It's very simple. You want to make sure that the select is sample colors. And then you want to use this eyedropper and we're going to click on that color cast area. Anywhere on this orange will do, and you can see this changes. But to really see it well, go down to your selection preview that should say none. You want to change it to black matte. And when you do, you'll start seeing the colors shine through. Fuzziness is kind of like your range, how much this is going to feather out into the area of color. I can also select more colors to be affected by using the plus eyedropper. In here then, by using the plus eyedropper, I can select other areas where I can see that color where it's casting. Then I can change the fuzziness of it and to what degree that's going to feather out. Now here, I'm not able to select, and it's always impossible really to select all just the counter by using this method. That's not a problem because we're going to take care of that in the next step. But first, now that I have the colors selected that I want and I'm happy with those, then all I have to do is select OK. Now I have a selection of where that color was detected. And now with that, I can create a hue saturation layer that will use this as a mask instead of the masking that's done in Lightroom Classic. To do that, you would go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then a hue saturation layer. Now you can name it whatever you'd like. I'll just click OK. And at this point now, I've got a mask with that selected. Let me close the properties dialog box and show you. If I do alt click on that mask, you can see the mask. This allows me to edit on this mask what I'd like to do. First though, I'll go here and do alt click on there. And I will go back to the properties dialog box for this. And there's a little tool up here that's similar to what was in point color, where I'm going to now select just the colors that we want within this range to see what they are, because I don't want to just desaturate everything. Even though I've selected the colors in a color range here, I can get more refined with a lot more control by selecting this little icon here. Then I can go here and select that color. And you can see what happened here. It selected a range similar to the, what the uh, point color tool would also do. And then here it's in the yellows, but I can say I don't want to feather so much into the green, so I'll move that over. I want to make sure that I'm deeper into the reds, so I'll do that. So whatever you'd like to do, you've got this range and you can change it at any time. Now what I'll do is just desaturate a bunch of that. Okay, so a lot of that already went away, 
But if we turn this layer off and on, we can see that it's also then affecting other areas that we don't want to have desaturated. So over here, once again, some of these cabinets being affected, for instance. So the easy part here to then edit is say that now that this has been applied, let's remove the areas that we don't want to have affected. So I can alt click on this mask and see what I'm doing. So for instance, the cutting board. If I were to zoom in on the cutting board here, I can see sure enough, it overlapped there. But here it's easy to do by just taking a polygon tool and I'm on the mask now. If I take that polygon tool and I just draw roughly around here someplace and hit the delete key, then it's not being applied. I'll show you what I mean here. I'll just do a shift click, excuse me, an alt click on this mask. And you can see then that that's not being affected where before it was desaturating part of that. So now that I've done that, it's not desaturating that. So once again, I can alt click on here. I can zoom all the way out. I could take for instance, the eraser tool and I can just decide to erase a lot of stuff out of here that I don't want. I can take the polygon tool and I can say, don't touch these cabinets at all. Just take those completely out of the equation. And this is a tool that you just don't have in Lightroom Classic, but here with the polygon tool on the mask, I can just press delete and those cabinets won't be affected at all. I can do the same thing down here to the flooring. I don't want this floor to be affected. So I'll just go down here and just delete all that out of there. I can go over here, delete all this out of there, whatever I'd like. And then I can do alt click on the mask and see how that's working and also turn the layer off and on to see what else I might want to add. I can see that it also desaturated some of this outside view up here, then maybe that's okay. And did it do enough of a desaturation across other areas? For me, that's probably fine. And now I can merely save this as a Photoshop file. I can archive this and I can bring it up later at any time. And this gave me a lot more control and the same results, if not better, than using the point color tool in Lightroom Classic.